Welcome to our lecture on the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is a motor division of the autonomic nervous system. Where does the sympathetic nervous system originates? The sympathetic nervous system originates from the thoracolumbar portion of the spinal cord. So again, because uh, the sympathetic nervous system is a two neuron system, it is composed of two neurons. The first neuron is the preganglionic and the second neuron is the postganglionic neuron. As you can see in the figure, the preganglionic neuron arises from the spinal cord, particularly at the gray matter of the spinal cord. It exits now the spinal cord, the ventral, ventral part of the spinal cord, now because it is again a motor neuron. And as you can see here, you know, it synapses with another neuron, which is the postganglionic neuron, to terminate at the effector organ. In this case, we have the smooth muscle, the cardiac muscle, and the glands. So the preganglionic neuron, we have here the cell body of the preganglionic neuron, and this is the axon of the preganglionic neuron. It terminates the ganglia. When we say ganglia, these are a group of cell body outside the central nervous system. Uh, as you can see here, we have here a synapse or a small gap between our axon terminal and another neuron that is known as the postganglionic neuron. This is the dendrites or the cell body of the postganglionic neuron containing the, containing the dendrites. And we have also have here the axon of the postganglionic neuron. And this is the axon terminal. It terminates at the synapse. And this is the effector organ. For the sympathetic nervous system, they, they have a short preganglionic axon and a long postganglionic axon. So as you can see here, mas mahaba yung preganglionic axon as compared to the postganglionic axon. This diagram shows the neuronal system of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is a two-neuron system. It has the preganglionic neuron and a postganglionic neuron. The preganglionic neuron arises from the thoracolumbar region of the vertebral column. That is why it is also known as a thoracolumbar outflow or thoracolumbar system. The preganglionic neuron, particularly you know, the axon of the preganglionic neuron, is considered to be short and uh, it arises from the spinal cord. It terminates at the sympathetic ganglia. When we say ganglia, these are the group of nerve cell bodies or neuronal cell bodies outside the central nervous system. So as you can see here, we have here our cell body. So this should be located in the CNS or in the spinal cord. And uh, we have here the axon of the preganglionic neuron. And we have here the axon terminal. And this is a, uh, the synapse. Not the synapse. Where uh, this is a connection between the uh, one neuron to the other neuron. So this is the postganglionic neuron where and these are the cell bodies of the postganglionic neuron and these cell bodies together are also are known as the sympathetic chain, sympathetic ganglia or the paravertebral ganglia. As you can see in the figure, the neuron of the pregangli the preganglionic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system is short so that it lies near you know, the ganglia lies near to the vertebral column or the vertebrae. So at the termination of the preganglionic neuron arises the postganglionic neuron. So the, the postganglionic neuron is also composed of the cell body and the axon and it terminates at the effector organ. As you can see you know, in the figure, the postganglionic neuron is longer compared to the preganglionic neuron. So the, these are the effector organs of the sympathetic nervous system. So an example of this are the eyes. We have here the salivary gland, the lungs, particularly the bronchioles, the heart, and the uh, digestive system, particularly the intestines. This diagram shows the synapse between the preganglionic neuron and the postganglionic neuron. So this is the, the cell body of the preganglionic neuron. It arises from the spinal cord. This is the axon 
of the prior ganglia unit neuron and it terminates at the synapse. When we say synapse, that is a small gap between one neuron to the other whereby the information or the neurotransmitter uh, is being released to act on another neuron or to another uh, effector organ. In this case, we have here um, a synapse between one neuron to the other neuron. This is a preganglionic and this is a postganglionic neuron. So this uh, synapse here you know, is known as an axodendritic synapse because it is uh, it connects the axon of one neuron to the dendrites of another neuron. Uh, and as you can see here, you know, for the sympathetic nervous system, the preganglionic neuron releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine at the ganglia. And we, have, we also have here you know, the receptors that, that are found in the dendrites of the postganglionic neuron. In this case, the receptors are known as nicotinic receptor. Again, uh, it is called as nicotinic receptor because its ligand is, its natural ligand is the nicotine and its agonist is the acetylcholine. So this is the acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter that is being released at the preganglionic neuron of the sympathetic nervous system. It will be released in the synapse to act on the receptors that are found in the postganglionic neuron. This highlighted portion of this diagram shows the interconnection between the postganglionic neuron and the effector organ. So this is a synapse. Now between uh, the postganglionic neuron, its axon terminal, and the effector organ, in this case we have these organs, now the eyes, the uh, salivary gland, the bronchioles and the heart. So sympathetic innervation to the uh, eyes, for example, will induce pupillary dilation, decrease in salivation through the salivary gland, bronchodilation, and increase in heart rate. This happens during uh, sympathetic, a sympathetic response. Now, for example, uh, when you are, when a dog aims towards you, so you can either choose to run, to run away you know, from that dog, from that dog. So in this case, uh, there is this what we call adrenaline rush. So you tend to run away you know, from that stimuli, which is the dog running towards you. So there is there is an increase in heart rate. You know, so more blood, uh, you need more blood in order to move away from that particular stimuli. So there is increase in heart rate. There is also an increase in the, uh, you need more oxygen to be able to move faster you know, away from that dog. So you need uh, more blood, more oxygen, so that there is also an increase in the heart rate, increase in the heart contraction. There is also an increase in uh, breathing, again, because you need more oxygen you know, to supply uh, the different parts of the body, such as the skeletal muscle, the heart muscle, for you to be able to run away from that particular uh, dog. Uh, in terms of the uh, pupillary dilation, there is midriasis because you need to see better to be able to run away. So there is dilation of the pupil. Of course, uh, during these uh, times, the digestion is uh, down-regulated. There is a decrease in digestion and there is also a decrease in urination. So this diagram shows the interconnection between the postganglionic neuron and the target organs. So again, this is a cell body of the postganglionic neuron. It arises from the ganglia. This is the axon of the postganglionic neuron. This is the axon terminal, and this is the target organ. This uh, red dots here represents the neurotransmitters. Of course, the sympathetic response would only be possible in the presence of neurotransmitters. And the main function of the neurotransmitter is to transmit the signal now coming from the nervous system towards the effector organ. So the, uh, these neurotransmitters are being released from the axon terminal. So in this case, uh, we have here the neurotransmitters. We have here the norepinephrine. The norepinephrine is the neurotransmitter of the postganglionic sympathetic uh, nervous system. This uh, norepinephrine here will serve as an agonist of the receptors that are found 
in these effector organs. So for example, we have here the salivary gland, the bronchioles, and the heart, as well as the intestine or in the GIT. So only when the neurotransmitter norepinephrine after it has bound you know, to the receptors that are found in these organs, will you know, the sympathetic response would be initiated. So in the sympathetic nervous system, the receptors are known as adrenergic receptors. So aside from norepinephrine, the other type of neurotransmitter that is important in the sympathetic nervous system is the epinephrine. So the Sympathetic nervous system mediates the fight or flight response of the body. So when we say fight or flight response, it has to do with the response of the body during emergency cases. So for the innervation of the sympathetic nervous system response would upregulate the critical actions for survival of the animal. Example of this are now, increase in the heart rate, increase in the cardiac output, bronchodilation, midriasis, gluconeogenesis, diaphoresis, and hypertension. Of course, during emergency cases, uh, we need to increase the heart rate, increase the cardiac output in order to supply more blood to the body. We also need bronchodilation because there is an increase in respiration because we need more oxygen in order to supply the different vital organs in the body, such as the skeletal muscle and the heart muscle, the skeletal muscle in order to run away, in order to, to run away from the particular emergency case, no? and in order also you know, to supply more oxygen to the skeletal muscle and the heart muscle. There is also midriasis or dilation of the pupil because we need to see better to be able to run away from the particular stimuli. There is also gluconeogenesis. So of course, when we say gluconeogenesis, that is now the synthesis of new glucose from non-carbohydrate precursors. So we need more glucose, glucose in order to provide energy for us to be able to run away from the stimuli. There is also diaphoresis. When we say diaphoresis, it refers to excessive sweating because you now there is an increase in temperature as uh, brought about by the increased production of the ATP. You now ATP induces increase in the thermal rate of the body. Uh, we also have hypertension. It can also induce hypertension because it initiates the increase in the heart rate. The sympathetic nervous system has a negative effect to the non-critical actions of the body, non-critical actions for survival. So these are the actions of the body that, that are not that important for survival. For example, salivation, lacrimation, digestion. Of course, during an emergency response, the body tends to uh, downregulate digestion, defecation, as well as urination. 